All right, ladies and gents, welcome back to another week here on the channel. Well, uh, let's start with the good news. At least we made it through another week right now with all of this craziness going on and threats of nuclear war and um, all sorts of other conflict, uh, energy crises. In fact, let's just touch upon a couple of things before we get into today's video where we're going to talk about, yep, it happened again um, over the last two days. The Bank of England had to bail out the British pound and all of the pension funds yet again. Um, and this is simply unsustainable. I talked about this. Was it last week or the week before? I can't remember now. But it is unsustainable. They cannot keep doing this. They're going to keep trying, but um, long term, this is not going to work out. So keep an eye on your pensions for those of you who are still confident that they are going to be, uh, you know, there in 10 years time. Keep an eye on these things as we go through this crisis. But yeah, over to Europe just for a, you know, a couple of minutes here. And we're seeing a massive escalation at the moment with this energy crisis. And it's not just in heating, so home heating. You know, we've talked about some countries lining up all day for a, a bag of coal. How ridiculous is that? Other countries banning citizens from going into the, the woodland and picking up old twigs and, you know, old bits of wood that have fallen on the floor. There's a, you know, making, passing laws to make this illegal. We've seen now uh, in the last week in France, huge lines at petrol stations or gas stations if you're American or Canadian watching. And even with the police now, if you pull into some of these uh, petrol stations, gas stations, the police actually check your um, reader, so on your dashboard, to see how much fuel you've got. So if you've got over a certain amount of fuel in there, they actually send you away. But even if you get into line, there's talks of hours long wait. So if you're in France, please drop a comment below so that everyone on the channel can get an up-to-date understanding of this crisis over there. But this isn't a surprise to me, and I think most of you it won't come as a surprise to, to know that it's affecting 20 to 25% of fuel stations at the moment, because what did we say just a few weeks ago? The refiners, so all the refineries in France were having huge issues, up to 60% of them were closed for maintenance. So is it any surprise, this is just simple statistics and economics, if you have 100% of everything and it's all operating at that capacity, everything's going to be normal, what you see in the economy. As soon as you bring that down by 60%, or even let's reverse it, and it's 40%, you're going to see a correlation there hitting the fuel stations. Now, yeah, they're trying to destroy demand at the moment. We, we know this. This is the long-term plan. You see it in all of the, the documents from the United Nations and the WEF and all the other um, government proposals. It's all there in black and white. They're trying to create this demand destruction on what they're calling, you know, pollutant uh, fuels, and, and they want you over to electricity and electric vehicles. But yeah, how are most of the power plants run with electricity? It's from natural gas, which now isn't coming in. But let's move over to the UK now that we've got a general context and just a recap of everything going on. And the main thing is the Bank of England has had to step in again. So this is actually I believe the third time, it could even be more than this, but let's just say the third time they stepped in again uh, today on Tuesday. They also did it on Monday. In fact, let's go over to the shared screen. And let's get into all of this. So let's start with this Business Insider article then. The Bank of England intervenes in bond markets again, warning of a fire sale risk to stability after gilt yields spike. I don't know about you, but when I hear the word fire sale. As a consumer, this makes me excited. But if I were on the opposite side of the fence, I would be extremely fearful right now. So if you have any exposure to this, and a lot of you watching will have exposure to this, I would be very worried about the situation. So the Bank of England said it would expand its bond buying program on Tuesday. The Bank of England has added index linked gilts. So we'll cover what these are in a moment. For those of you who didn't watch the other video, I'll just go over a couple of points with it. Uh, to its emergency bond buying program to calm markets. So key word here is emergency bond buying. 
This means it wasn't planned. Therefore, when you do emergency measures in the economy, you actually amplify the risk because you never know which way this is going to go. Yes, it may calm the markets, but it could also create even more fear, especially if you do it three times within the space of two weeks. It's the second time in just two days that the Bank of England has stepped in after a sell off in UK government bonds. That's never something you want to hear as a government. The UK central bank warns that soaring gilt yields, so remember, as the prices come down, yields go up, could lead to a fire sale and threaten financial stability. Yes, and it's not just UK financial stability. Remember, we're very much interlinked now, so it will affect other markets and countries as well. The UK central bank said Tuesday that it will buy up to five billion pounds, so 5.52 billion US dollars of index linked gilt a day. So I've highlighted the word here a day because I was listening to some of the media reports and they were just talking about this five billion and that was it. Well, no, it's not just five billion and that's it. It's five billion per day until the end of this week. So even based on that, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's 25 billion. This is what people aren't talking about. Index linked gilts are UK government bonds that pay interest in line with the rate of inflation. Again, key point here in line with the rate of inflation. Dysfunction in this market and the prospect of self-reinforcing fire sale dynamics pose a material risk to UK financial stability. The move comes after 10-year index link gilt suffered a huge sell-off on Monday as yield soared 64 basis points. So in layman's term, that means 0.64% to hit 1.24% for their largest daily rise in three decades. And we're hearing this a lot at the moment. You keep hearing in two decades, three decades, four decades. Now, previously you would hear that very, very rarely, some sort of a black swan or some sort of a financial crisis. And there would be some sort of metric in there that they would say, this hasn't happened in a decade. But now because of all these interlinked crises that we've been talking about for a while now, you're not just seeing this on a yearly basis. Oh, one thing happens this year, one thing happens that year. It's actually happening on almost a weekly basis now. Sometimes we've seen four or five things in the space of a week because remember it's all interconnected that say we haven't seen this in 50 years, in 60 years uh, or 20 years or 30 years as of what we're seeing here. Tuesday's intervention is the second time in one week that the BOE has stepped in to try to calm the market. But the bank's widening of its emergency bond buying is unlikely to do the job, analysts said. And I would somewhat agree with this. It's going to go one of two ways. The fact that the Bank of England has widened its support measures for the market by including index linked guilt in its program of government bond purchases will only serve to worry investors even more. Less than two weeks ago, the central bank started temporarily buying long dated UK government bonds after guilt yields surge and the British pound hit an all time low. It said it would ramp up the maximum value of its daily purchases and fortify LDI. So this stands for liability driven investments funds. So you'll see this a lot LDIs, but they never usually explain what it stands for. So this is linked to a potential risk to UK pensions. And this is why they have to keep bailing out these LDIs, because if they don't, can you imagine that? Well, a the British pound collapsing in value, but also the pension funds collapsing and just getting wiped out. It's not even an option. So uh, as much as I don't like what they are doing in terms of printing, 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 well, the other alternative is even worse. So again, they've created this problem for themselves by printing too much during the, the COVID era, if we want to risk using that word on the channel here. But this was the mistake they made. They just created far too much currency. But all countries around the world did a similar thing. And they're now causing all of this inflation that we are seeing.
The key sticking point is that the support measures are only scheduled to last until Friday. Will that be long enough or will the Bank of England extend the support scheme? Extending it could go one of two ways. The market either applauds the moves and breathes a sigh of relief or it gets even more worried, thinking that the extra time suggests the crisis is more severe than originally thought. And again, I would definitely agree with this statement. So this is what we're talking about then. I've just pulled this up from Trading Economics for those of you that want to get a little bit deeper on this. And this is the UK government bond 10 year. And this is what we refer to as guilt, the 10 year guilt. So this is where the crisis came in on the 28th of September that we covered that in depth where the yield hit 4.5%, which was just too much of a spike, causing massive problems, and it would cause massive problems for the government at these sort of rates. And the Bank of England stepped in and artificially lowered the yield right down to around about 3.9%. And since then, it has shot right up again. So it hit 4.5% and now it's settled in at 4.4% as of the time of recording this video. But this is still a huge, huge problem. So I've pulled up a little bit of information for you if you're not familiar with gilts and yields and why it's so crucial. So what are they then? UK government bonds are a way for the government to raise money. So remember, it's the government that is creating the bonds and it's the Bank of England that is printing the money to buy the bonds. And this also happens with the US Treasury as well, by the way, in the US government. So when they talk about an Inflation Reduction Act, well, what they're really doing is they're printing more debt and the central bank is then buying that debt. So it's uh, expanding the currency supply, not shrinking it. So it can't be an Inflation Reduction Act. It can only be an Inflation Expansion Act 12 to 18 months later on. A gilt is essentially an IOU that the Treasury writes to its lenders promising to pay the money back plus interest within a time period. For example, over 2, 10 or 30 years. The yield on a gilt is the amount of money an investor receives for owning the debt and is represented as a percentage of its price. When a bond price falls, its yield rises. So that is what we're seeing at the moment. We're seeing this 4.5% rate again as bond prices fall. Yields fall when investors are less willing to own the debt, meaning they will pay a lower price for the bonds. So how bad then is this latest crisis in the financial market? So the bank, so this is again still the BOE, warned last week that it had been forced to step in to avoid market meltdown. And again, these are the words they're using, so I've highlighted them in red. When some pension funds were left close to collapse, uh, again, in red, that's why. And there was a risk of a knock-on impact elsewhere in the financial system. And yeah, that's absolutely correct. It really is. Because it wouldn't just hit the pensions and collapse the pensions. It would start collapsing the pound. It would start collapsing other areas. The banks have a lot of exposure. Remember, do banks just keep your money in the account there? Absolutely not. They lend on mortgages, they lend on businesses. In fact, just thinking of those two things and the personal loans as well, all of these are in a massive bubble and they're set to collapse at the moment. And in fact, I'll, I'll touch upon that just very briefly because why are mortgage rates rising? This is almost accurate, um, their statement here. Higher guilt yields and the prospect of rising interest rates as the bank looks to call rampant inflation have a significant impact on mortgage lenders. Well, I say it's almost accurate because it's not the prospect of rising interest rates, it's actually rising interest rates. So just remove that word prospect and you have a more accurate picture. Rates on two and five year fixed deals have gone past 6% for the first time in many years due to the market turmoil, while lenders have also been pulling hundreds of products. Again, almost accurate. If you remember what I said around, gosh, I don't even know when it was now. It was a long way back. But I said that the market in terms of the housing market yeah, sure, it will keep running for a little while, but you're going to hit this uh, ceiling, which I call the affordability ceiling. 
And that is around, I said it could hit at 6%, but it will definitely hit at 7%. And what, and I described it as a bell curve. So what happens is as the property prices are going up, this is in correlation with rates coming down, being very low, artificially stimulates the housing market. So what actually happens is it's, it's going up like a rocket, like it did over those two year period during COVID, <coughs> you know what? So we can't use the word too many times or they flag the videos, right? So it's going up like this. And then as the rates start going up, what happens here, it goes onto the bell curve. So it goes on to here. And then as we hit that 7% rate or even 6%, it, it depends on the country and a dozen other metrics, it will plateau. And actually we are starting to see that. We are seeing the plateau now. I firmly believe that we are on the plateau. And as it comes across, then it will stay like that in some markets, especially the very small markets with low amounts of inventory and housing stock, you will see a plateau. And then when it comes off the bell curve will depend on so many factors, it's too complex to get into. But that is what will happen. It will come off the other side of the bell curve, depending on how tight they need to be with monetary policy. And it looks like they're going to bring in tighter fiscal policy as well. Now, fiscal policy is government. The monetary policy is the central bank. And it looks as though in the UK in particular, they are going to start tightening now up the fiscal policy. They tried to do these sort of, you know, tax breaks for the rich and you know all that sort of stuff. And it really didn't work. It backfired. So they've had to tighten that. And now they're talking about even more tightening for the UK economy, mass layoffs. They're talking about 100,000 civil servants, another 100,000 in, in other staff that are linked to the government. And the idea here is to save a lot of money. Well, yes and no, there's a lot more you need to do to actually bring these cuts down. Because if you think about those civil servants, a lot of them will be paying minimum of 20% tax plus their national insurance. Some of them will be on 40% tax bracket, 45% for some of them. So a lot of that money would have come back in anyway into the government accounts. And then what about when people are, these workers are out there spending money into the economy? Again, that's siphoning its way back to the government accounts as well. So it's not really quite as simple as they are making out and that, oh yeah, we need to make job cuts. If it were me personally, I would look at other things that wouldn't um, affect the economy in the same way. So honestly, we could talk about this stuff all day long. I think I've only covered two out of 20 points that I had on my mind today to, to talk about, but I really wanted to emphasize the importance, especially if you're a British citizen or you hold, because uh, I know a lot of you are British citizens, you live overseas, you have UK bank accounts, full of cash, full of money. Just be very careful with this, especially pensions and things like that as well. I've covered multiple times, I don't hold any pensions. And if I did, I'd probably have a, a sip and manage it myself, as opposed to letting someone else lose it all for me, not financial advice. But overall, just be careful, just really make sure that you um, have a solid plan for your money, for your investments, really make sure that you understand what you're doing with all of this. And if you are going to enter the stock market, just be very careful. For me, now is not the time. I've liquidated, well, I liquidated 10 months ago now, at the, the start of this year, the end of last year, completely liquidated, very happy that I did. And again, I don't think I timed the top, but that wasn't my, uh, my idea, that wasn't the concept. I never try and time the markets. When I see a huge amount of volatility, I get out. When I see that things are starting to change and turn around, or maybe the central banks do their pivot, they start creating money again. That is one of the times I start to buy these hugely undervalued, um, significantly undervalued stocks that I have on my watch list. And uh, another thing is just be careful for those of you who are having financial advisors. A lot of them are fine, don't get me wrong. But if you're having a lot of financial advisors or brokers looking after your money, remember, no one is ever going to look after, you know, and be as safe and risk averse with your money as you will. So just make sure you're overlooking everything. Make sure you understand everything. Again, I have a stock market course. It's available in the description of this video. Go and have a look at that, see what you think of it. I have got a stock market watch list as well on my Patreon. Um, don't just, uh, you know, leave this to, to chance and think that you're going to, you know, 
figure all this out yourself and become a top level investor without doing some sort of training. Again, I'm not saying you have to do my course or my training, but definitely speak to someone or even if you have someone that's a friend or family member who's very competent in the markets and has been doing this for a long time, just make sure you get some guidance before you uh, start speculating and um, risking your capital. All right. Well, that is all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. God bless. And I will see you tomorrow.